Hey guys, welcome back to JW Deep Sky. Today we've got an unboxing and first light video, so let's get into it. So as you can see, we got a Skywatcher box. Um, this is also the new DSLR camera I bought. This is a Canon 60D. So let's see what's in the box. So the Skywatcher Evolux 62ED is a 62mm doublet refractor with a focal length of 400mm. It's a pretty solid build. It feels well built. The OTA comes in at 5.5 pounds. Lucky for me, I was able to get an open box used one, uh, actually never used, on eBay. Uh, it cost me $350 and then $40 for shipping. But these go new for, I've seen them as low as $329. There's also some sites that are selling them for $475. There is also the optional field flattener reducer you can buy, which brings it down to 360 millimeters focal length and an f-stop of 5.8. And you can pick this up, I've seen as low as 269. And once again, there are sites that I saw selling it for more, but 269 is basically what you can expect to pay for this one. So I got a really good deal on it. It was never used. Um, you know, hopefully you can find a good deal yourself. But 329 for the scope and 269 for the flattener reducer for a total of $598 isn't a bad deal for what you're getting. The scope has one layer of ED glass inside of it, and the flattener reducer actually also has another layer of ED glass. So you're getting two layers of ED glass, which should give you a nice image free of most chromatic aberration. One of the few immediate flaws that I see with this design is that this dovetail plate can't go past this focuser lock screw, but it is easy to fix. All you have to do is Loosen the cradle knobs, take the dovetail plate off with an Allen key, and then spin the telescope within the cradle so that this part is up here. And if it's up here, this focuser lock screw is actually not as far out as the bottom one, so the dovetail plate will actually be able to slide past it if you do that. I also got a Botanov mask with this. It fits perfectly, but I'm not sure where it came from because I bought this whole thing used. So let's put it together. First you have to take this green thing off. Then you have to take this green thing off. Then let's bring the focuser out a bit. So that we can put... So that we can put this on. which holds the field flattener in place. Then you can unscrew this back piece of the flattener. And I have an M48 T ring that goes on the back of this. So it's the next day. Uh, the reason that it's the next day is because inside of my T-ring, the inner threaded piece was spinning with no resistance. But I found out there's a little hole and a little screw here that you have to tighten in order for that not to happen. So now we can finally attach our T-ring to the back of our field flattener. And now we can attach our camera. So obviously the camera is not oriented properly. So what we can do is the field flattener comes with this little fastener here that you can loosen and the camera won't fall out if you do that. But you can just turn it as you need and tighten it on all three sides so that it's oriented properly and secure. And let's extend the dew shield. And there you have it. So on the back here is a Canon EOS 60D Astro Modified, which I got from astrogear.net. So you can find the Canon EOS 60D for roughly 150 used online. And the astrogear.net Astro Modification Service 
is somewhere around $200, but you can just buy an Astro modified camera from them. What I like about this camera is that it has a flip out screen. So, you know, you can turn it, flip it, you know, any which way it makes, uh, it makes framing up your target a lot easier. Other than that, it's a little bit bigger than like a standard Canon camera. I had a Canon XSI before, and this is significantly bigger than that. Maybe like an inch or two like wider. So I haven't used it on a Nebula yet, just the Galaxy, which I'll show you in the first light, but really excited to see what this Astro Modified camera can do along with this scope. Should be nice. And a couple of nice accessories I picked up for the camera are this battery grip, which if you take this part out, it holds two batteries. So, you know, you can pretty much run this most of the night. What I'll do is I'll put one battery in there and then get everything set up and ready and make sure my target is framed. And then as soon as I'm ready to take all my light frames, I'll just swap it out with this battery. And this will last, you know, four plus hours, likely. Um, but if that fails, I have an AC adapter for it as well. I haven't had a chance or a reason to use this yet because I'm usually at dark sky sites rather than just at home. Uh, the galaxy picture that I took that I'll show you in the first light uh, was taken from my home, but I did end up just using the battery pack because I only wanted to get like, you know, a few hours on it. But if I wanted to run it all night, I could because I have this now. So one thing I picked up was this dovetail bracket, like mount little thing. Basically you just attach this to the bottom of the dovetail bracket and put it in here. You can slide it forward in either or backwards in either direction. And it just helps you achieve a better balance. I actually don't like this one though. I'd rather just have one that just is a dovetail cradle. It would just be easier. But someone mentioned online that this, if it's mounted here, wouldn't run in to like this piece basically, or any other part of it, but it actually does. So I'm just gonna go with like a regular dovetail bracket mount anyway. So here it is mounted on the bottom. As you can see, I pushed it like really far back so that like the weight of this is really toward the back with the camera and everything. So, oh, I <laughs> also have to, do this because if you notice I actually put the focuser knobs on top that way the dovetail bracket has room to slide back you have to flip it around because this won't get in the way whereas this one up here is too far out so it does get in the way so there it's pretty secure let's balance it now we can balance it in this direction first um, looks like it's a little heavy on that side so I can just slide one of these counterweights. By the way, um, they don't sell the counterweights individual for this mount. Uh, you have to buy basically just this bar that comes with the counterweight, which is fine. You know, it's not too expensive, but I just bought, yeah, another counterweight of the same type. So now it's a little heavy on the counterweight side. And you could slide this, the whole bracket itself down a bit, which I will do actually. Should work a little bit better that way just as long as you leave room to see out of your polar alignment scope. So now it's a lot heavy on the counterweight side because I just slid the whole mechanism down. Bring that up there. This is where I had it before, roughly. That seems to be a good balance. And the way I balance <clears throat> in the other direction is, I'll show you. We're gonna loosen this clutch knob real quick. And then we're basically just gonna see, actually we'll tighten this clutch first. We just, we just wanna see like which side is kind of leaning, but right now it, leads, it looks like it's balanced perfectly. But let's say it wasn't. I'm gonna loosen the bracket that the dovetail is inserted into and just slide it back. just so we can see what it looks like unbalanced. So there you go. Um, so that's, yeah, pretty bad, you know, pretty bad balance. Uh, this is basically the best you'll get without getting a special bracket. I mean, you might be able to get it a little bit better, but, so I'm gonna slide it back to where it was. So it seems to be balanced in both directions pretty well. So I mentioned the OTA was about 5.5 pounds, but all the equipment adds up to about eight pounds with the camera and a flattener reducer, which actually the Star Adventure handles it pretty well. 
with this setup, I was able to get pretty good stars at 30 second exposures, uh, which isn't bad considering it's just a little star tracker. This can do auto guiding, but only in one axis. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna set it up pretty soon, probably within the next couple weeks. But without guiding, I was able to take 30 second exposures and get pretty round stars, as you'll see in the first light picture, which I took 300 30 second uh, exposures, so about two and a half hours worth of time on the target. Um, and it was in my very badly light polluted backyard with cars driving by and uh, the smoke was actually really thick in the atmosphere. So uh, here's the first light picture. I hope you like it and um, catch you in the next video. forgot bonus clip hey guys uh, I just wanted to capture the moment uh, tonight went pretty well uh, I've got about two hours on the North American Nebula the clouds rolled in at just the right time for me to start doing my calibration frame so I lucked out there but yeah overall it was a great night I had some trouble starting I was on the eastern side of Assateague Island in Maryland and everybody was just flashing their spotlights like right at me so uh, I went over to the west side like on the bay side and there's, there's like one group of people here but they're just kind of off in the distance playing music but other than that it's very dark here and I think it's gonna be a really good image so thanks for uh, tuning in